More bad news for United Airlines. A uh, new report out details a separate instru- incident where uh, another passenger was physically threatened for not leaving his seat. Now, this goes along with the week of bad press that they've had since they literally dragged a guy out of his seat, broke some of his teeth, and dragged him out of the aisle. All right. So now apparently this airline reportedly threatened a first class passenger with handcuffs because he didn't want to leave the seat that he paid for. Isn't that amazing? Now, here's a story. Now, uh, this is Jeff Fearns, right? Now, Jeff Fearns purchased a full price class ticket to travel from Hawaii to California. That's pretty nice, right? Now, he was asked to get off the plane by an airline employee because the flight had been overbooked, the same issue that uh, was happening before. Um, And he told the, the Los Angeles Times, that's when they told me they needed the seat for somebody more important who came in at the last minute. They said they have a priority list, and this other person was on the higher on the list than I was. Well, there's always someone higher on the list. There's always somebody with more money, more connections, more influence, etc. So it's kind of disturbing that they have a priority list that can bump you off the plane even after you've been seated. Mm-hmm. Now, like the passenger removed in that vir- uh, viral video last week, Ferenc had already been seated in the plane, and that's actually a very important distinction because according to their policy, their own policy, if the flight is overbooked, you can be removed, but only if you're at the gate, if you haven't actually boarded and taken your seat yet. So they're violating their own policy. Mr. Fearns knew that. He said, I understand you might bump people because the flight is full, but they didn't say anything at the gate when they're supposed to. I was already in the seat, and now they were telling me I had no choice they said that they would put me in handcuffs if they had to. Like, like this guy's some sort of common criminal. This guy's sitting in first class. This He's is unbelievable money. what's happening. This isn't a regular person. This is, this, is, this is not somebody not like you know who's not you and me. I can't afford first class. Pretty sure you can't. Um, mm. you know, this is not somebody who's poor regular Joe. This is somebody who's got a little bit of money. And they're still doing well, it. Well, even that if it guy. wasn't, this is still beyond. It's still beyond. Up. But I'm saying, I'm saying the difference is they don't care who you are. If there's right. somebody who's more powerful, who has more money, they will crush you. They don't give mm. a crap about us, and they don't even give a crap about themselves, about people who are even close to being in their class. It's the top of the top, man. So what happened to him? The airline moved Fearns to a middle seat in the economy section of the plane, and this is hilarious. Where he sat between, he said he sat between a couple in the throes of an argument. So imagine getting bumped from first class if you were ever lucky enough to be there, and then getting put in the middle seat, which would suck, between an arguing couple. Mm -hmm. Kind of hilarious, to be honest with you. (laughs) Yeah, it is. I mean, but but this goes into the, the whole lesson from everything that's going on. Airlines should not be allowed to overbook. Yes. That, that needs to stop. It should have never happened. Because it's not like you reserve the seat and don't pay for it. You pay for it. You paid for the seat. You That's pay seat. for it. So they're already getting all their seats filled. There's no reason for them to overbook. It's a profit gouging, yep. bullshit way of doing things. Yep. And if some airlines came out and said, we're not doing this anymore, those airlines would crush it. Because, I mean, I, I can guarantee you, I as a consumer would say, I'm only going to fly those airlines from now on. Unless they do not service somewhere. So if like a big airline, like a Southwest um, or like, a, you know, whoever else, if airlines like that caliber came out and were like, we're only we're not overbooking anymore. And, you know, we're, we're going to have, you know, some watchdogs are going to make sure we, we abide by this. We're not overbooking anymore. I would go out of my way to make sure I only patronize those airlines. Mm-hmm. Um or, or there needs to be some kind of, you know, intervention here where, where it's prohibited because, I mean, this is what happens. And these airlines, I mean, deregulation has brought, uh, you know, the, the, the flight industry to its knees. I mean, a lot of the people are overworked. They're underpaid. Benefits have been reduced. Some airlines are doing it better than others, certainly. Uh, but, you know, airports are miserable places. Uh, you know, TSA is, is just completely out of control, out of paranoia and fear. And, uh, you know, now's the time for, for some changes to happen. And, and, you know, consumers need to do everything in their power uh, to try to make that happen. And I think we need to demand that overbooking stops. I mean, that's a start. Start demanding yeah. that overbooking stops. And the airlines that step up to the plate, those are the airlines 
uh, that are going to remain standing. Mm -hmm. Now, the one good thing I can say about this, Ron, is that you will not United is not going to have any more overbookings because no one's going to want to fly United. Yeah. To be fair, but look on this guy. So so look at listen to how they treated this guy again, who is not one of us. He's actually somebody who seems to have a lot of money. Upon returning home, Ferens wrote to the airline CEO, Oscar Muniz, asking for a full reimbursement of the price he paid for the ticket and for United to donate $25,000 to a charity of his choosing. This guy was not fucking around. He's like, do you know who I am? Do you know how you treated me? You're going to give me my full price ticket and you're going to donate money on my behalf to a charity. United responded by telling him that a refund is not possible, of course but offered the difference in price between what he paid for an economy seat, and they also offered him a $500 credit to put towards another ticket. Despite the negative appearance, we hope to have your continued support. <laughs> According to an airline customer service representative, your business is especially important to us, and we'll do our utmost to make your future contracts with the United sat satisfactory in every aspect. <laughs> Why I'm reading that to you is to illustrate how they don't care about us. They don't care. Yeah, who they you truly are. don't give a shit. I mean, that that they CEO do. of United was disgusting. His apology was disgusting. Yeah, you mean non-apology? Yeah, yeah. Look, we are living in the corporate states of America. We are the dystopian nightmare future where the machines have taken over. Except it's not the Terminator that's crushing you. It's a corporation. A corporation again is a is a soulless machine. And they will destroy you whether or not you've actually paid the price for their, for their good or service. Okay. But it's not the corporation's fault. They're not evil. They're amoral. They have no morals. They're just there to make mm -hmm. profit. You know whose fault it is? It's not theirs. It's ours. Not us, you, and me individually, but as a nation. Why? Because we haven't put a check on them for allowing uh, and, and electing politicians that continue to take money from these self-same corporations who then in turn allow them to crush us. It's our fault for, as a country for championing unregulated free market capitalism that allows these kind of business practices to flourish. Things like overbooking. We've got to have a government there to police the corporations. And in order to do that, they have to not be allowed to take corporate money. So... There's the overall lesson that you can learn from all of this, from the fact that they're smearing Dr. Dow, by the way, um, mm -hmm. in order to, to help their boost their corporate relations, which is going swimmingly, by the way, uh, for them, since their stock price is in the, pretty much in the toilet. Um, we've, got to get the, we've got to put a check on these companies so they don't do this anymore. How many more instances do we have of corporations stepping all over us crushing us into the ground and then you'll have apologists too and and i've read a, a whole bunch of uh, i've seen a whole lot of responses about this well you should have he should have got up he should have moved mm -hmm. when, whenever there's somebody in authority you have to listen to everything that they say no fuck your authority i'm not listening to you where does your authority right. come from the fact that you're in a, an authoritative position no fuck you i'm not going to do what you tell me that's it. I'm, I'm not. I, I'm, I'm not going to listen to you. You have no authority with me. You can kindly fuck off. I paid for this seat. Rage against the machine will, said it best. Yes, you will literally have to drag me off. Mm. Yeah, fuck Amen, you. Man. do what you told me. I, I got the reference. Yeah. I know. I'm impressed. Yeah. I'm impressed and maybe mildly surprised. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you should be. You should be. Uh, but seriously, like... We've, we've got to stop. We've got to stop giving them so much power. We've got to take the power back from the corporations and from the wealthy. And there's, there's, there's only one way to do it. We've got to get the money out of politics. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more like this, please hit the subscribe button below. And if you want to support truly independent progressive media, please consider becoming a patron at patreon.com slash TYTNation.